All right, now I'm going to attempt uh, to do this this evening. And what I'm going to do tonight uh, will not be very much appreciated. Off just a second, and then back on in a minute. Um, by this world because we're going in opposite directions. A Christian is going the opposite direction than the world. And the sooner you learn that, the better off you'll be. Too many of God's people are trying to be chummy and snuggle up with and the world, and it, it don't work. It don't work. So uh, some of y'all people are going to make up your mind whose side you're on. And all you young people will too, eventually. And it's one side or the other. You can't, you can't put two feet on different boats. One going to sell out money. You. you can't have one foot for the Lord, one foot for the devil. I'll go, they're both going the opposite direction. It'll split you in two. So tonight, as we come down to this time in church history, down to the end of what we call the Laodicean, Church age. The title I'm going to use tonight would uh, illustrate it, and I'll show you some things tonight. Hebrews chapter number 10, and I want to look at a verse of scripture here th this evening uh, just for a moment, and we'll try to hurry. I understand you got school tomorrow, and uh, we'll move right along quickly this evening. The first part of this, Hebrews chapter 10. Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter number 10, we're given a, uh, a good warning here and some encouragement, some advice. And so look at here, and let's see what it says here tonight. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's what I talked about this morning. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And then it's interesting that he goes, 22, provoke one another love and good works, and not forsaking the assembly of himself, going to church more regular, right after that. Isn't that, that's not a coincidence. Where he said, hold fast the profession mind of Grabbing a hold of something like that right there. Holding on to it real tight. The title of the message tonight is Hang On Tight. Because it's going to get rough. I remember the first time, and still to this day, when I ride one of them old, rickety, raggedy, wooden roller coasters. That's always my favorite ride. Uh, we'd go down at the beach years ago when I was a teenager. And then we'd go over to Dollywood and all those places. And they'd have one of those big old... Oh, uh, big. I mean, humongous. Lord mercy. And, and they're made out of wood. Two by sixes, two by eights, two by tens. And they all bolted together. And I mean, when I was standing in line, I looked at them things. I thought, you know, one of these days, one of, these days, one of them is going to snap. And break. And I remember looking at them. And, uh, and I'd see people riding it. And it didn't look that bad. And I got on there. And uh, they'd say, now, get around that curb. You better hold on tight. And I said, ah, you know, I, I was going to be one that would throw my hands up, I guess, when you go on the roller coaster and not hold on. And uh, I said, if they can do it, I've seen people coming down them hills, and they'd all throw their hands up. That's like, look at me. I'm brave. I don't, I don't have to hold on. And uh, so I went eventually I was slinging across the road over there somewhere. But they, I remember going up, and I'd ride, and he'd go around there pretty good, and I'd say, this ain't bad. And then all of a sudden, we'd start one of them big old hills. Lord have mercy, it looked like it was a mile up. And it'd go click, 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 click. Ah, this ain't nothing. Click, click, it ain't that high. Click, 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 click. You get right at the top of it, and son, all of a sudden, it went, whoop, and all you see straight down. And, you know, when you're, when you're up, up there looking down, it looks further than it does when you're down there looking up. And, and I'm telling you, that thing took off down. It felt like a bottom fell out from under you. And, I'm telling, and I forgot about being brave. I forgot about holding my hands up. I mean, we went there, vroom, like that. And around there, go, vroom, like that. Vroom, like that. I was going, ah! <laughs> Hanging on for dear life. I thought I was going to sleep. Listen, it, 
it's like going to the chiropractor. So they'll give you an adjustment. Boom, boom, it'll straighten out your, your spinal cord spine and everything else. And, I'm, and I still like to do that. Honest to goodness, I do. Uh, but uh, good night in the morning, it slung my guts. I thought it was going to sling my dinner out uh, around one of them curves. And it does, some people. And, you know, when it starts going like that, you better hang on tight. It's getting rough. When he's little, a merry-go-round. Have y'all ever heard of a merry-go-round? You know anything? Self-propelled little round thing. And you all sit on there, and one kid pushes. And you push, and you hang on the merry-go-round. And you're going around like this. It's fine. Hey, Mama. Hey. Uh, and then it starts getting faster. And then it starts getting faster. And it starts getting faster. First thing you know, it's like, hey, Mama. Uh, I get. Next thing you know, boy, your hair, your hair flying out like this. Next thing you know, uh, there went one rolling down through the woods. <laughs> Uh, next thing you know, uh, and, and then somebody said, you better hang on tight. First thing you know, it's like, like Kit Hovind, them's got them hanging on like this, you know, and their feet stuck straight out. And just slinging them around and around and around and around. Hang on tight. It's going to get rough. And that's exactly how I feel about our generation of Christians. I've been saved a long time now. I've been preaching a long time. I'm telling you something, people. The world has changed more in the last 10 years than we've ever seen it change in our lifetime and they ain't no going back. It's not going to get better. We're not going to see this great mighty revival. Not that God couldn't do it. God can do anything. I'm telling you, this thing is shot, brother. When our government has voted and deliberately standing against everything that you and I believe in as a Christian, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. So I'm going to tell you tonight, you better nail it down, hang on, Hang on, because it's going to get rough. You better hang on tight. Now, I want to say a few things about this evening and show you a couple of things. Ladies, kids, you better hang on to your family. You better hang on to your family. If you've got a mama or if you've got a daddy that, that, you, that you're with and they love you, and, and, and many of you do not live with your real parents, and I understand that, but if you've got somebody who stands in the place of a mom or a dad, and you have a, a family, uh, maybe not blood kin, but a family, you better hang on tight. Too many young people are exactly just what he preached there a minute ago. They grow up and they start thinking, I know more than mom. I know more than daddy. I'm a genius. I know everything. I'm going to live like I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over and over where a, a girl will come in. Uh, she'll come to church. And then, first thing you know, she's tempted. She's tempted to go with this guy who claims he loves her. And she's tempted to go out with these friends. And the next thing you know, uh, she's, uh, mama's saying, do this. And she's saying no. And mama's saying, daddy's saying, do this. And the boy's saying no. And the next thing you know, it's all messed up. It's exactly what he preached. They go out, live like the devil. And get uh, listen, in the day we're living in, you better hang on to your family. If you've got a mom and dad that loves you, if you've got parents that care enough about you to put some restrictions on you, you ought to thank God for it. I, you may not like it. I know. I was a teenager too. I, was there. I didn't like nobody telling me what to do. But I look back now and think, not that. One of my, one of my girls, uh, not, not that one. Well, I got one around here somewhere. Uh, my other girl, she, this boy liked her one time. And if she's, she's I, think, I don't know if she's here or not. There's one. Other than back yonder, it's not her. Could be her, though. I can change this story if you want me to. Uh, but uh, uh, one of them liked a boy that I didn't want him to like. It's not her, and it's not her. So, to, and uh, she might be watching that, too. She is, no problem. And, uh, and this boy would come to her school at that time and wait on her to get out of school. And somebody told me, they said, but Danny, did you know that your daughter like that boy? And I said, no, she don't. <laughs> and, and they said, oh, yes, she does. I said, no, she don't. And, and, and I'm not wasn't trying to be a dictator or mean or nothing. I said, hey, this ain't going to happen. And, they, and they, she said, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Anyway, I finally set my foot down. I said, no. 
I said, you leave her alone? You ain't talking to her? You ain't being, oh, I was the meanest person in the world. They thought, how mean you are. You're not giving him a chance. You're not being good. You know what? You know what she told me about 20 years later? She said, Daddy, if you hadn't have done that, no telling where I'd be right now. And you know what? You know what your, your parents do? They stand between you and, and messing up big time. And so hang on tight to your family. I tell you one thing: when you're over there in the hospital somewhere, or yeah, I go through. I, I meet people all the time. Uh, they're they're overdosed. They're getting trouble, and it's mama that's standing there holding her hand. It's daddy that comes down there and gets them, bails them out of jail. Them old friends are gone off out yonder somewhere, and you can't find them. I'm telling you, kid, you better hang on to your family. Stay close to your mama. Stay close to your daddy. Appreciate what God's given you. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's it's ridiculous the things that's going on today. They'll be there when you got cancer. They'll be there when you're sick. They'll be there when your heart's broke. They'll be there when he is gone. Mama will be there. You better hang on to your family. Second, you better hang on to your friends. Hang on to your friends. Many of you grew up in church. You have good Christian friends, and you get around your friends. And, and then one thing, what the devil does is he gets in what we call the youth group. And um, what you do is we'll go to camp, and all of y'all have a good time, and everybody will get right with God and hug each other's neck, and then you love each other, and you, you're a big group and everything. And little by little, the devil will try to weasel in there and get in between this one and make this one mad at this one, and this one mad at this one, and this one mad at this one, and this one mad at this one. And then there's a girl coming and she says, I don't feel like I have any friends at the church. And then the devil will send somebody out that don't go to church. And the next note, thing you know, they're out there. Listen, y'all, we're, we're going down the hill. We've crossed that top part. We're going like this. This, this we're, we're on the roller coaster spinning around. You better hang on tight. And I'll tell you what some of y'all need to do. All your Christian friends here in church, you need to forgive each other. You need to get right with each other. You need to keep your heart right. You don't need a bunch of friends. At all. I can tell you what you are or what you're going to be by the people you hang around. One more time. I can tell you what you are or what you're going to be by the people that you run around with. Got birds of a feather flock together, son. I'm telling you, whoever you hang around, you say, well, I know they're a little bit wild, but they're funny, and I like to have a good time. Eventually, 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 birds of a feather flock together. And so you better hang on to your friends. Next thing you know, you'll be sinning. Next thing you know, it'll be worse. Next thing you know, it'll be, uh, I, I'll never forget the first time I took God's name in vain. And I'm ashamed to tell you I even did it, but I did. I was about... Uh, I think in the eighth grade, and I was a year ahead, so I was about 12 or 13 along in there, and I'll never forget this boy that I went to school with, he cussed bad. I'm talking about God's name in vain, blankety blank, blank, and I, it was awful, and I remember uh, I didn't do it because my mom would kill me, and, uh, and mom always told us, say, you know, don't let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, like the Bible says, and and I, I thought that, but I still said words I shouldn't say. And I remember this girl that I went to school with, I heard her cuss bad. I'm not talking about just regular cussing, bad cussing. And I remember thinking, well, if a girl can do it, I can do it. And we rode a bicycle down his driveway, and we went boom, 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 boom down there, and I said it, GD. And the first time I said it, I felt dirty. And I wasn't even saved. I didn't get saved until I was 18. And then I said it again, and I said it again, and I said it again, and it got to where it didn't bother me too much. And then the next thing you know, of course, back then it wasn't all in the songs we listened to. Not back then. And you know something? It got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it all started because that's the same way it starts with drugs. That's the same way it starts with alcohol. That's the same way. Oh, good night. Why do y'all always screaming and hollering? To try to keep you from messing up and putting yourself in a position you can't fix. Thousands every day. You better be careful about your friends. And then I'm going to say last, and this one will spend some time, hang on tight to your faith. The devil is doing everything in his power to take your faith. 
He's doing everything about uh, Well, you go to a public school, first thing they'll teach you is that uh, 13 billion years ago, the solar system was formed, and 4 billion years ago, planet Earth, they don't know that. They're just making up stuff. Them people don't a bit more know it 13 million years ago than, than my name, uh, Billy. They, don't, they have no idea in this world what they're talking about. But they do this study and do that study and do this study, and they put a little man up there, a little monkey, and then a little bit bigger monkey, and then a little bit bigger monkey, and then a little bit bigger monkey, and then a little bigger monkey. And they said, now listen, boys and girls, uh, this is a Piltdown man, this is a Heidelberg man, and this is a Neanderthal man, and this is Creosis period, and, and this is this period, and so many billions of years ago, and we come from this, and it all started with a big bang, and you're sitting there in school, and you're thinking, my goodness, maybe this is right. Maybe my old mom and daddy and my preacher's, Oh, hillbilly redneck, don't know what they're talking about. Maybe, and the devil you steal your faith. And then the next thing you do is you get on TikTok, and there's some weirdo on TikTok saying, I used to go to church. I used to be a Christian. And they're, they're bombarding you kids day and night and day and night and day and night to try to steal your faith. Let me tell you what you better do. You better hang on tight to your faith. I'm not talking about hanging on to the Lord. You're, he's got a hold of you. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about your faith and what you believe, and what you stand for. Every kid in this room tonight, every teenager, every mom and dad, we ought to tighten up our grip and hang on to our faith. Better hang on to your faith. I'm telling you, it's a fixing to get rough. We're getting going to be persecuted. We're going to be, um, we're going to be condemned, and eventually, like there are in other countries, much more persecution. You realize? China sent us three wonderful gifts. The Wuhan flu, fentanyl, and TikTok. And those three things just about finished us off in this country. So tonight, I, I want to show you, just update, and I've done this for years, I mean, so I don't, I don't take a lot of time on it, uh, about how that the devil will attack you. Well, the devil will attack you. And let's see what, what we got here tonight. Okay, uh, Wes, get me those lights there just a second. And I'm going to show you what I am. Now, when I do what I'm getting ready to do, some people get mad. And they'll say, I have no business attacking these people. Because I'm going to first show you uh, a person by the name of Little Nausea. And Little Nausea... Uh, is makes you nauseous, and I'm going to show you what he done blaspheming Jesus Christ. Now, once again, y'all listen to me. People say, Danny, why do you get up there and attack him? Look, I didn't start this fight, I'm fighting back. If they'd leave us alone, I'd leave them alone. When you start putting Jesus Christ, putting your, portraying yourself as Jesus, putting yourself on a cross, mocking his name, and everything, then we're going to say something about it. Somebody did that to my mother, I'd say something about it. Somebody did that to your mother. If you're a hyphen man, you'd say something about it. So tonight, I'm going to show you. We'll start off with this just a little bit. And we'll get to Taylor Swift here in just a minute. So hold on to your seatbelt. Hang on tight. It's going to get rough. Look how this blasphemy starts out. <laughs> What this is showing is like all these saints going to heaven, making a mockery of a Christian faith, and they're all going up to the beautiful city there, clothed in their white robes, and guess who would be Jesus? That's your there it is. Right, yeah. Take it, there's hell, and first of all, he takes you down into hell and then shows you what he's done. I'm, I'm right, yeah. I'm gonna take it. Look at that. Now watch this. Play a basketball. Dunk it over the devil. And then put yourself on the cross. This way. Took him to Upside the telly and I told him this is Oh, Brother Danny, you shouldn't preach again. Hey, listen, people. Listen, people. The Lord Jesus loved me enough to die for me. He died on the cross for me on that sin. I ain't going to let them do that and keep my mouth shut. Amen. Amen. Now listen, I'd rather, I, I would, I, I cannot believe that a Christian, oh, they're just playing around. Well, play with something else. I 
That's the blessed Son of God that died on the cross for our sins. He said, I don't like that. You show whose side you're on. You're on the wrong side, buddy. You need some, you need some backbone. You need some backbone to stand up. What's, that's your Savior they're mocking here tonight. What's this? Now he's Noah. There's the ark. See all the animals going in the ark and the flood came. Yeah, yeah, you know. Is he about to get away? I'm a See what that does? It puts it down. And you got that cool music and your flesh likes it. And then you're being preached to by Satan. You say, that music sounds good, preacher. I know it. I understand that. The flesh likes it. But you've got to understand, it's a trick. The devil ain't going to come to you with a pitchfork and horn and say, hey, I'm a devil. You're going to go to hell. He ain't going to do that. He's going to say something you like. Something that tastes good, feels good, sounds good. That's what the devil does. That's his, that's his job. And so they all sail away and we have a new beginning. Now I'm going to talk about Taylor Swift. I know very little about Taylor Swift. I don't care to know any. I've never, I don't know one song that Taylor Swift sang except when I got this somebody sent me until I studied this. Didn't know one of them. I have no idea what all her songs are about. Somebody said she is now endorsing Joe Biden. And the reason is because 90% of her songs are about choosing the wrong guy. You'll get over it. You'll be all right. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I'm not nothing personal against that girl. I don't even know her. But I know one thing. All of a sudden, in the last year or so, she just went and blew up. When that happens, you can mark it down. Somebody is getting some power from somewhere. The same as a preacher. When you hear about a preacher and he's preaching about these revivals and stuff, like CT when he preached that big revival down yonder and all them people got saved and everything. You know what? When you hear about a preacher doing that, people say, oh my goodness, man. Uh, God's really using that preacher. And he really got anointed. He went out somewhere in the woods and got anointed. When you hear about a singer in rock, rap or rock and roll or a movie star and all of a sudden their name's everywhere and all of a sudden that's all you hear about and that's all of a sudden everybody talks about. You know, she makes, uh, she makes uh, right about uh, $400,000 a day, they say. And I have some other statistics here. And like I said, I have no problem with her as a person. I'm not attacking her as a person. I'm not even judging her as a person. I'm not. I'm fighting back. And her newest song that everybody's crazy over is called Look What You Made Me Do. And the reason y'all looking at each other now is because you've been listening to it. I wouldn't tell nobody if I was you. He said, well, Brother Danny, you shouldn't condemn them. They shouldn't condemn the Lord and the Bible. Amen. They leave us alone, I'll leave them alone. I'm just fighting back. Well, watch this. The whole thing is, I, I think something happened to her about a year ago, and some kind of deal was made, and she skyrocketed. That's what I think. Can't prove it, but I bet you I'm I just bet you I'm, I know what I'm talking about. She made some kind of deal and all of a sudden went from just normal country pop crossover singer to mega, mega, probably the most well-known woman in the world right now. Overnight. So something happened. And I think during this song she's telling you the old Taylor is dead and now I'm hooked up with a new life and new power. And the words of this song says. Like it's Satan talking to Jesus. And the words say. I don't like you. I don't like what you've done. You get you. I, you got the keys to the kingdom. And them used to be mine. What kind of song is that man? You got the keys to the kingdom. And they used to be mine. And now I'm mad at you because you got them. So I rose up from the dead too. And if you can do it, I can do it type of a thing. And you'll see where she got her inspiration for that. 
And then she said, I've got a list of names, and yours is on there, and it's written in red. Whose name's written in red in the Bible? Whose words are written in red? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? What's it? Starts out, starts out with a, like a, in a graveyard. Like a scary movie. Here lies Taylor Swift's reputation. She, the old Taylor died, and now she's the new Taylor with superpowers at the Super Bowl, with the super boyfriend, with the super income. With a super fan base. Look at here. That's her. And she's coming out like she come back from the dead. And she's trying, talking about the stage that the Lord set. And here's how she'll get her powers. It's nothing but a bunch of snakes. I can't slow this down and show it to you. And I've never watched the whole thing. Somebody just sent me this. And see, you can see right there. There, there's live snakes all around her. And what she's saying is, I was a normal person, and then these snakes come around me. Let me ask you something. Who would make a video with a bunch of snakes crawling around them and pouring them a glass of tea and drinking it? Who would do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Look here. Now look here what it does. You'll see the snakes crawling. Yours is in, see that? What's that serpent? Put that venom in that cup. That's telling you that the serpent spit something into that cup and she drinks it and then she dies in a car wreck and comes back from the dead and the old Taylor's dead and now she's super mega Taylor. It's not just talent, y'all. It's not just sexuality. It's spiritual. It's demonic. Demonic. I've always preached that music is a medium through which spirits enter a person. I've always believed that. Why do you think we sing when we first come to church? Bring the Holy Ghost in here. And it opens up our hearts to, to the Holy Why do you think we sing when we have an invitation? Because it softens the heart to the Spirit of God. Why do you think I have a rock concert? To soften your heart toward the devil. Make money off your flesh. Because it feels good. Now watch what happens when he pours that. See him spitting in that? Look what she See that? The serpent spits in there. She drinks it. Gets killed in a car wreck. There it is. I can't let you hear the nasty music. Look here. And now look here. She comes back up. What does that look like she's up against? Now what she does is it don't have that little top part on it. So she said, if I put myself on a cross, people are really going to take a fit. So I'll just put like a thing like it stands for Taylor. But there ain't nobody with much sense could look at that and not say what that represents. Any honest person that just happened to be a big old T that looks like a cross and just happens to be people down at the bottom of it, just have, that's accident. There ain't nothing in them videos by accident. It's coming that close to putting her in the place of Jesus Christ. Now, I know I'll make somebody mad here tonight. I understand that. Listen, I, I don't, that's not my goal. My goal is not to be a smart aleck or be mean. You know, my goal is to help you see we are in the last days. Hang on tight. It's getting worse. The devil's coming in the back door after your kids, my kids, my grandkids, all the bus kids. Hang on tight. It's going to get rough. That's what I'm trying to do. Nothing personal. Watch this. See the cross. The people the oh, look at that. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that whoever designed that video wasn't hinting toward putting her in the place of Jesus. I don't believe it. I don't believe. It. I don't believe that's a coincidence. And then when she gets her fan base. Look at I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. The old Taylor can't come to the phone right now because she's dead. Listen. Why? Oh, because she's dead. Showcase. Now we got the Super Bowl. 
So she takes the power, the fame, and the fortune and goes to the Super Bowl. And this is I Spice that she made a video with about a year ago with Taylor in, in hell representing the devil. This is her friends, and this is Taylor Swift and her friends, and they drink, they're chugging down a beer. Now, what they're doing that for, you can't, you're not going to convince me. I know some of y'all, you're going to get mad. I don't think he has the right. He has no right to judge. Look, look, I ain't got nothing personal. You're not going to convince me that they just happened to be chugging that beer down when the camera got off. You can see that one lady, whatever it, it, whatever it is, in the middle, popsicle or something. You can see it. Look, and when they're on the monitor of the camera, start showing her signs like that right there, her devil sign, and pushed up her upside down cross. When somebody got an upside down cross on them or around them, that's the ultimate blasphemy of Jesus Christ. And she's got it right around her neck. You can see it hanging there. Now watch this. You see this sign right here? That all I've got the rest of this video shows George Bush uh, uh, doing it. Shows Obama doing it. And I ain't got time to show it to you tonight. This sign right here. That's three fingers down and the two up for the devil's horn. You see it on her, her hands right here in just a minute. I proved that. I have video, rock, video of 30 years ago where a rock album where they say the three fingers are turned down to deny the Trinity and the two are raised up to represent Satan's horns. So it ain't just cool music. And what they did, they said, all right, get ready, Taylor. Y'all get ready. Ready, I spice. Okay, there it is, there it is. We're on camera. Chug that beer down. We drink it all at one time to see if you can handle it for it without getting drunk and passing out. Now, what, that, what the devil did at the Super Bowl was use her to encourage 20 million young girls to chug down beer. Get mad if you want to. Call me whatever you want to call me. But I go to sleep tonight and say, Lord, I told them people the truth. The devil used that. You don't see it happen? What's, what's I spy there look up at the, at the monitor to see if they're on yet? An inverted upside down cross on her necklace. While. See the upside down cross? Who, what? if you were paying attention a year ago, they were exposed for exploiting, sexualizing children in their ads. Remember that? Remember that thing? Skip that on that. They were exposed for child trafficking, and nobody said a word about that. And all of the celebrities who love... See Taylor chugging her beer down there, and her girl up? Look at her hands here. Look at her hands right here. Both these hands doing this, and then she'll hold that upside down cross like, look at here, kids. Look at here. Watch this. And Siaga didn't have one word to say about it, and still support them. Plus, Asarma shows Taylor herself in hell taking off a demonic will support them. Plus the song that Taylor did with Ice Spice called Karma shows Taylor herself in hell taking off a demonic mask. The least. All these people who are so easily, allegedly willing to... See them hands? See her looking up the camera? Okay. All their souls for fortune, for fortune and fame. I hope you keep your daughters far from this stuff because it's only getting worse. But then she said, I hope you keep your daughters far from this because it's only getting worse. Now that Show kids got to keep mama away from them. Else. Would this you like to happen at church last Sunday morning? I wish it was bigger, biggest picture I could get. But you know how they all want to be cool and set up things like this called a Super Bowl service at a church. And they they done the whole they done the whole platform like a football field. I'm not against football. I like I like football once a year, like the Super Bowl. I watch actually watched part of the last of it and they fooled around, pulled around, pulled around, went in overtime and I turned it off. But I'm not against football. I'm not against a game. I love I love y'all know me. I love sport, I love basketball. I love competition. I love to see Dax race. I love to see them boys hit home runs. I love I do. I like baseball at the end of the World Series. I'm not against the sports. But look, the devil is look these nuts. This is church. And the preacher comes out 
And he said, all right, we're going to have a little football here this last Sunday morning. He said, we're going to, they're going to use the Bible. And they got it zipped up in a little, like a Bible cover. And they said, we're going to use it as the football. Would you like to kick the Bible or receive the Bible? And the associate pastor, she kicks the Bible for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, watch this. Kick or receive the Bible? I will receive. Tom wins the toss, chooses to receive the Bible. And she's going to kick Patterson back with the kick. That's the Bible down there. That guy's punting. He's going to like he's punting the Bible. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Is that a touchback? Can you yeah, even get Lee, a touchback? First time in 18. What's it? Kicking the Bible? Do you, do you honestly think? That the Lord put that in the heart of a preacher to get the word of God on stage and kick it. The Bible that our forefathers died for. The Bible that the saints and the martyrs gave their life for. So me and you could help. You say, well, they're just playing, Brother Danny. You need to have your hand looked at. You don't treat the Bible. It's not a football. You know, when you kick something, that's an ultimate disrespect. The only thing you can do something more disrespectful is kick spit on somebody. Kick. The Bible? Kick the Bible? Good night. And they said they went out into the crowd and the crowd went wild. You ought to be a dumb, dumb congregation sit there and look at something like that. I'm all for getting up. I'm all for a good skit. I'm all for having fun cutting up. But look, not, not kicking the Bible. Who put it? Who do you think would put it in the heart of people to kick the Bible? In church? Marilyn Manson tires it up. I mean, we understand that. He's full of the devil. Now they're kicking it to church. You better hang on tight, y'all. It's a fixing to get rough. I ain't a prophet. Wes, well, give me just these two far on the far right, just real light. Real easy. I'm not a prophet, but I think, I think that's fine. Thank you. I think we're going to see some mighty bad times. I think that they're going to test the internet going out for a little while. And if it does, and when it does, this might be a while, as a test to get everybody sure. Can you imagine if the internet was shut off in North Carolina tonight? <whistles> Boy, you talk about a mess. Think about it. And the parents here tonight, all right, we got our, we, we're, we're mesmerized by fame and fortune and Hollywood. Come on, girl, get two or three more of our girls up here. We're going, we're going over to St. Nell to the cross. And I'm going to tell you this evening, our, our parents are more worried about success of our kids in the world than they are being disrespected by this, uh, in the church of God. We got parents who'd rather their kids be a cheerleader than a Sunday school teacher. They'd rather have uh, perfect attendance at the club at school than to be in a Sunday school class and be faithful to God every single Sunday morning. They'd rather see them hit a home run than win a soul to Jesus Christ. They'd rather see them uh, get a degree than be faithful to God. They'd see them rather make a touchdown than it would be to run the aisles and shout and praise in God for salvation. They'd rather see them uh, uh, thinking about uh, talking about bus route and not talking about God. They'd rather see them being beautiful than being scriptural. It's time that we grabbed a hold and held on fast, people. It's going to get rough from here on in. My challenge is, every one of you here tonight, every young man, every young lady, every young boy, every daddy, every mama, every one of us here tonight, say, look, preacher, I know we're nearing the end. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to wind up with the devil and his angels. I don't want to wind up with... Uh, with Satan and all that crap. Or you say, maybe I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But I don't want to dishonor God. I don't want to. I need to get my life back where I used to be. They're standing this scene and they're saying, Amen. They're saying, God's speaking to your heart. You come on right now. Amen. Amen. Let's get this all tonight. Amen. Let's get all tonight. Some of you mamas and daddies. We might need somebody to pray with these young people here tonight. Maybe some of them need to get saved. Come on. Come on. That's right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Ladies. Amen. Come on, teenagers. 
we need a bunch of young mamas and daddies that can pray over here. Y'all come on, just get down here. Do plenty of room for you. Plenty of room for you. Amen. Amen. What do you ladies pray to these girls here, please? Bring it to right the here. cross. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Let it to the cross. We have some ladies. Get it under the blood. Ladies. Drown your pain in every Amen. stain in Amen. the mercy Amen. blood. Let it to the cross. Y'all been to the altar? You need y'all don't know how many who got saved or what some still pray that's fine, plenty, that's fine. And uh, I want you to uh, turn the choir light on on or off one. Uh, I want you to come back up here tonight and stand here behind me. We're gonna pray with you before you go. Now get some of these lights or something. Turn them all the way on. Choir lights fine. That's good. All right, come on, let's go. Oh, uh, y'all come back up here right now. Come on. Oh, no, y'all. Let's go. Are you under 21? Let's go. Why don't you stand up here behind me? We're going to pray. We're going to pray with you. Amen. All right. We're going to pray with you. Under 21. Hey, all of you. Under 21. Come on. Amen, brother. Amen. Let's go. Under 21. Come on. Under 21, come on. All right, rest of y'all, you can be seated there just a minute. Scoot that way, y'all. Come on, y'all. Scoot that way. Look over here. Over there. Amen. Amen. All right, Mr. Fletcher. All right, y'all can be seated there just a minute. All right. 
Now, for you adults in here that were being judgmental, uh, you need to come go with us visiting Saturday. If you sing, there are kids here tonight that come from a bad, bad, bad situation. It is a miracle that they're even here. It's a miracle. So what I've done tonight is about like going through a briar patch trying to pick out stuff, but uh, we got her done by the grace of God. And we're going to pray with these before we go. How many of y'all got to go to school tomorrow? Raise your hand. Got to go to school tomorrow? Man, I hate that for you. I feel sorry for anybody else to go to school. <clears throat> That's your punishment for being young. You're punished for being old. You got to work. So it never ends. At least you get paid for it. I'd rather work than go to school. But uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're going to pray with y'all before we go. And I know we had uh, the ones that prayed with these kids, one who ever got saved, whoever got their life right with God. Uh, we'll talk to you before you leave here tonight. But we don't you to know that we're praying for y'all. I want y'all to know we're praying for you. And God's going to bless you if you'll commit your life to Him and give it all to Him. And for the rest of you, be easy. Be easy in your judgmental, self-righteous attitude. That's where would some of us be tonight if God hadn't got hold of us? Where would I be tonight? I'd be worse now, I guarantee you. Wouldn't find me in church. So uh, we're going to pray for y'all. Uh, we're going to pray that the Lord will bless you and take care of you. And sorry, your surprise is tonight, there's no surprise. That got you, didn't it? You was expecting a surprise. But we're going to have a big one the next time. So don't miss that, okay? All right, now they got to go to school tomorrow, so we're going to pray with them. And I want every one of you adults to make up your mind, you're going to pray for them tomorrow at school. Ask the Lord to have. And we have some situations in the home that definitely, definitely need to be prayed for. Uh, electricity out. Water cut off. Just, I mean, just over and over and over right here tonight. And so, uh, let's pray, okay? Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and our hearts for you this evening, Lord, I thank you for this crowd of young people and teenagers here tonight. Lord, I pray that you bless every single one of them. Lord, as they go back to school tomorrow, I pray that your hand will be upon them, that you would put desire in their heart to want to live for you and serve you. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to hang on tight in these dark days and hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Bless these kids. Thank you for the bus ministry. Thank you, Lord, for people who care. I pray that you bless every single person here tonight. All these people here tonight fighting their own battles, stuff we don't even know about. I pray you'd help every one of them. Do what ought to be done in their life. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, stay right there in a second. All right, give me the rest of the lights are with. All right, now here's what we're going to do. Thank you for your patience. I know it's a little rough in here tonight. Uh, that's fine. You'll live. Let's all fellowship before we go. Please, please be careful getting out of here because there's kids running everywhere. And you want everybody to get home safe, okay? All right. All hearts clear? All right. Y'all take off down this way. Y'all stand up this way. And uh, we'll we'll be dismissed, okay? Amen. You are dismissed. You can go. God bless you.